Some years ago, a letter appeared in the national news that was sent to a deceased person by the Indiana Department of Social Services. I want to read to you the letter that was sent to this person that the funeral was already done. They've already been buried in the ground. And here was the letter from the Indiana Department of Services. It says this, Dear Madam, your food stamps will be stopped effective March 1st because we received notice that you passed away. Our deepest sympathies for your family. You may reapply if there is a change in your circumstances. Well, there hasn't been many that has this change in their circumstances except one person. His name was Jesus. <laughs> that is the simplest meaning of Easter, Resurrection Sunday. What the meaning of Easter is this. We are living in a world which God has the last words. That's what it is. Or let me put it to you another way. We live and die. Christ died and lived. There is something exciting in my heart when I get to speak about the resurrected Jesus. See, when you speak about Jesus and about all the other religious leaders throughout time, they part ways when you use verbs after their names. See, to all the other religious leaders of the past, you have to add ED to all their verbs. That's past tense. Muhammad lived. Buddha said. Joseph Smith walked. Confucius laughed. But Jesus is in a class all by himself. Because of the resurrection, Jesus' verbs end in S. A present tense verb ends in S, which means the action is happening right now. Jesus speaks. Jesus walks. Jesus moves. Jesus heals. Jesus baptizes. Jesus delivers. It's Jesus who is alive. Hallelujah. It was missionary David Siemens who tells of a Buddhist convert who changed Buddhism, the E-D, to the S. And some of his fellow Buddhist friends asked him, why have you become a Christian? I love his answer. He said, well, it's like this. Suppose you're going down the road and suddenly there's a fork in the road leading in two different directions. And in each of these roads, there's two men. One's dead and one's alive. Which one would you ask for directions? And he said, I ask the guy who's alive what I'm supposed to do. He chose the guy whose verb ends in S. We choose today the live guy. We don't choose church. We don't choose a denomination. We don't choose a religion. We choose the one who is alive forevermore. The man who has suffered the most in human history stood on the verb ending S. His life was upended by death, loss, and suffering. And Job spoke these words. I know that my Redeemer, what's, what does it say? There's an S at the end of that verb. My Redeemer lives, and in, in the end, he will stand on the earth. He chose the live guy when everything was crashing around him. Suffering and pain didn't change the fact that he knew his Redeemer lives can I just help you? On a bad day, he lives. On a good day, he lives. In 2024, he lives. Jesus is alive today. Hallelujah. Why does that matter? Romans 8, 11 says, And if the spirit of him 
who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. He who raised Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who, it looks like it ends with an S with me, lives in you. When I got out of a cab today to walk into this place at about 8.55, I had someone meet me on the street, a young man that I've known who's been coming to the church, dressed in red. He's the one who puts people on the double-decker buses to go view New York City. But on his breaks, he goes to church on Sundays and on Tuesdays. And he said to me, he said, pray for my father. My father is battling cancer. And as I walked into the building, someone with a cane said, pray for me. There's pain in my back and this pain has come back. How, how, how can you walk through this place and how can you pray? Because here's what some of us want to say. We, we have our own problems. I've got my own pains. I've got my own issues. But it's not me that prays. If the spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in me. It's not me, it's the spirit inside of me that can set free from cancer because Jesus heals. It's the spirit inside of me that can heal back pain. Jesus lives. It's the spirit of God that can give direction for someone that needs to know what to do with the job situation because Jesus speaks. Jesus is alive and we choose the one that has been risen from the dead. Our victory hinges on the resurrection. Just as we said, because he lives, Jesus said, because I live, you can live also. The truth and the validity of Christianity all rest on the resurrection. Here it is in just simple words. If you find that Nazareth carpenter, then all of this falls apart. But the good news is you can't find that carpenter because that carpenter has at the right hand of God the Father, exalted as king and exalted as savior. The resurrected Jesus has changed everything, not only for the monologues and the people that you've heard today that were portraying Bible characters. The resurrected Jesus has changed us, a choir. He's changed us as musicians. He's changed all of us that are sitting in this place. All you have to do is make sure that you're looking in the right direction. We have people looking all over for help and are missing the one that's been resurrected. To have people without resurrection life trying to solve life problems without noticing that the resurrection is the very thing that solves it. Three women were discussing a problem with the answer in front of them. Three women were set, so set on their assignment that they almost missed their miracle and most importantly, the miracle. They came to the garden tomb and never thought they'd leave with a message that would be told around the world. Listen to it. You heard one of the three speak today. Mark 16, one through four says, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might come and anoint him. They were coming to the burial. This is what they were gonna do. This was the tradition. Very early on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb and when the sun had risen, I want you to see this, they were saying to one another, don't miss that phrase, who will roll the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And I love verse four, because while they're saying this, they're looking at each other. They're looking in the wrong direction. And the next two words prove this. And then it says, while they're asking this, looking up, they saw that the answer had already come. That the stone had all, while they're trying to solve the problem, God said, I already took care of the problem. <laughs> Three women asked the question, who will roll the stone away? They never looked up and realized it was already done for them. They were asking questions that God already provided the answer for. 
That we live in a society that's asking questions that God's going, just look up. The answer's already there for you. What was the issue? These ladies were coming to make a dead man smell better, they thought. And they all had the same issue. Because what they thought was going to be their, 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 their miracle in life was taken from them. At least that's what they thought at the crucifixion. And I kept thinking to myself that the issue with them was make dead things smell good and talk to people who have the same problem. Let me say that again. That their whole life was going to be make a dead thing smell good and talk to people that have just as many problems as you do. Do you want to constantly deal with the people in the same boat, same problems, same old, same old? Folks, I'm just telling you, I'm tired of talking to people that can't even help themselves, let alone help me. I, that's why instead of talking to them of what we should do, that's where we look up and realize what God has already done. It's as A.W. Tozer said, he said, but the sons of this world who don't have God, they only have each other, and they walk around holding each other, looking to one another for assurance like frightened children. Folks, if I'm going to hold someone's hand for an answer, it's going to be the live guy. It's going to be the one whose verbs end in S. It's going to be the one that could conquer death. It's going to be the one that can perform miracles. It's the one that can begin to work the things that I can't do. That's the living, it's living life without regarding the empty tomb. Nothing is worse than that. In fact, it says, without God in the world, we're without hope, Ephesians 2.12 says. We're fooling around with smelly stuff and problematic people. I don't need spices and people that have the same problem. I need a resurrected Savior in my life. It was on this Easter day in 1960 that W.E. Sangster, one of Britain's leading preachers, I've read his books, I've read his sermons, but he was laying, dying in his home in London. He was in the last stages of a paralyzing disease. He was dying of MS, and he couldn't even speak a word. He couldn't even walk a step. And his sole means of communication is he would take a pen and scribble something on a pad and on that 1960 Easter morning in his London apartment and in that bed, the great Methodist preacher, W.E. Sangster, picked up the pen and wrote these words, Easter. He said, what a pity to not be able to shout on this resurrection day. But then he paused and wrote something else. He says, but what a tragedy if on this day you have nothing to shout about. I have to tell you, I've got something to shout about today. I've got something to say that God sent his son. His name was Jesus. He has not only died for my sins, but he is raised from the dead. Today could be a shouting day for people that just think this is a church day. Folks, this is not a church day. It's a shouting day. It's a day to say that Christ is alive. We've chosen the resurrected Jesus. When you don't see like these three women what God has done, then you end up, you're living a life managing tragedy and hardship instead of walking into victory. The three of these women were not meant to anoint his body. They were not meant to walk to a tomb. They were meant to tell the words, he's alive, he's risen. He is risen, it says in Mark 16, 6. He's not here. Behold, here's the place where they laid him. And then their new assignment. Don't, don't talk to people who have the same problem. Don't anoint with spices. Here's what you're supposed to do. Verse 7. But go and tell his disciples that he's alive. An empty tomb changes our lives, changes our purpose. Instead of sprinkling scented spices on dead things, you realize I've got a resurrected Jesus that I can begin to say, he's alive. Let me close with this. In a state park in California, there's this giant rock 
hanging on a rope with a large sign next to it, and it's called the Weather Report. And at first glance, it seems almost silly, but it's actually genius. Let me read to you the sign as we get ready to close, and it's called the Weather Report. Here it is. This is what's on the sign in the state park. Check the rock. If it's wet, then it's raining. (laughs) If the rock is swinging, then it's windy. If the rock is white, it's snowing. If the rock gets dry, then it's not raining. If you can't see the rock, it's foggy. And if the rock is missing, it's been blown away by a tornado. That was the issues of the three ladies. They didn't check the rock. (laughs) Folks, I want to draw your attention to that rock in Mark chapter 16 in front of the tomb. If I could have been a bystander for those three ladies bringing out their spices, talking to each other, I would have yelled at them, check the rock. Because are you wondering about how to receive eternal life? Here's a thought, check the rock. Are you wondering what Easter is all about? Check the rock. Are you wondering how to be set free from fear and death? You know the answer. Are you wondering how to be set free from addictions? Are you wondering how to be delivered from the fear of death? Are you wondering why Christianity is different than all the other religions? Are you wondering if Christianity is relevant today? Are you wondering if Jesus Christ is God? Are you wondering if Jesus is who he said he is? Are you wondering if Jesus really conquered death? Are you wondering if Jesus is alive? Are you wondering if Jesus will speak to you? Are you wondering if he's coming again? And are you wondering if he'll keep his promises? Check the rock. Stand with me. Hallelujah. Check the rock, you can't find the carpenter. Check the rock, you can't find that Jewish carpenter. The rock is rolled away his body is no longer there as I told you Friday night Jesus didn't say I am finished he said what because he was just getting started that's why he said I'm I'm not finished because I'm just getting started I'm just getting started to change lives on 51st and Broadway I'm just getting started to those that woke up late this morning. You couldn't get a seat. And while you're sitting in that annex with a mean look. Someone just yelled, check the rock. It was on one occasion the great Florentine sculptor and artist Michelangelo turned turned on his fellow artist with indignation and with absolute disdain. And he said these words. He says, why do you keep filling gallery after gallery with endless pictures of only one theme of Christ and weakness and Christ on the cross and Christ hanging dead? He says, why do you concentrate on the passing episode as if it were the last work? As if the curtain dropped on him with disaster and defeat. I wanted to go, you go, Michelangelo. He said, that dreadful scene lasted a few hours. But to the unending eternity, Christ is alive. The stone has been rolled away. And he rules and reigns triumphant. Let me, for a moment, step on some humble ground. What actually Michelangelo was telling them 
was three words. He was telling them to check the rock. That's what he was telling them. He was telling them that the resurrection is an exclamation point on the mission being accomplished on the cross. That's what he was telling them. He said, the resurrection is the, he's alive. The resurrection is the moment that says, stop talking to your girlfriend and your boyfriend and thinking they're the ones that are going to get you out of this. They can't get you out of this. That's why some of you may need to text them today and say, I've checked the rock. We're done. It's over. I've got a living savior today. I've got someone who's going to change me today. So for those, for those that don't know Christ, you better check your phone. You may be getting broke up with today. So check your phone. You may be getting something going like, they just broke up with me because they checked the rock and they're going, you can't give me what only God can give me, what only Christ can give me. So here's how we end. Here's how we end. You may be here today and like those three women, you've looked at every place except the empty tomb. And that's why I'm telling you, check the rock. Is there hope for my life today? Check the rock. You understand what I've done, Pastor Tim? Have you understood the junk that I've done? I've cursed him. I've told people he doesn't exist. All those folks, you may even just, I just have to tell you, you have sat even last night in clubs and bars with people that are as jacked up as you are, trying to figure out what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And some of you are here today because you said, well, let's just go to church. Amen. And here today, good news, you're in the right place. You're in the right place. So for those as we've said that we've prayed for, those that are watching in Lima and London, Lagos and Los Angeles, Manila and Moscow, I want you to listen. You check the rock, the carpenter's not there. He's changing lives all over the world. He's changing lives on 51st and Broadway. Those that are watching outside on 51st and those that are in our annex, those that are in a balcony on this main floor, this is where your life can change today. This is where you simply go, I'm tired of making dead stuff smell good, and I'm tired of talking with people that are in the same boat as I am. Seriously. When do you just simply go, enough is enough. Enough is enough. I don't want that story. You keep talking about the same thing. Get rid of them. Get rid of her. This is a day of break it off. And this is the day of come into my life, Jesus, and change me today. Every time you've gone into that bar and that club, it's just trying to put spices on something. That doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Every time you, you go on that dating website or you're sitting in that speed dating thing, ringing the bell, going, I like poetry and ponies. You just got to at some point go, they're as dead as I... Listen, I'm, I'm messed up. They're just as messed up because we're both here. So we're just sitting there. So just look at them and go, I checked the rock. God bless you. Ring the bell. And just walk away. Just walk away. Done, done, done. Today is a day of life is going to change. Life is going to change. Life is going to change today. It all changes today. I want to pray a prayer. I want to ask you a question. It's the most important question anyone could ever ask you. Because it's the response to checking the rock, and it's this, have you been born again? It's the most important question anyone could ever ask you. Pastor Tim, why would you ask that? I use, the, I use that phrase, not because it's a TSC phrase, it's a Jesus phrase. Jesus said it. John 3, 3 said, no man can see the kingdom of heaven unless they are born again. That's Jesus' words. You have to understand what that means. This is you had a first birth physically, and we spend our whole life talking with people in the same boat and sprinkling spices on dead stuff until we're born again. That's when we realize the resurrected, like, like Ricardo and the team saying, the resurrected Christ is living inside of me. That's what you're, that's what you're singing. That's, but today it could become a reality. That's what born again means. 
Just as you had a first birth physically, many of you in the hospital, you need a second birth spiritually. It's when Christ comes in and changes you from the outside. It's when you crack the spice jar and say, no more dead stuff and no more dead people. I want a living Jesus. I want the guy whose verbs end in S. I choose him today. I'm gonna ask you to bow your head and close your eyes for the next few moments. Annex, I'm gonna ask you to do the same thing. Because those six, seven hundred that are watching in our annex right now, it's so important. Those that are watching on 51st and Broadway outside the, the building right now, I want you to listen. And folks, I can't wait for the day that we get to put the services on LED walls on Broadway and 51st. Then they can watch it, then, then let it arrest people out there. But here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Balcony, main floor, annex, those that are watching online. I'm going to ask you to make the most important decision of your life. I'm going to ask you to make a choice to say, I want to be born again. Because Jesus said, no man can see the kingdom of heaven unless they're born again. If I was to ask you today how to get to heaven, you may come up with a whole bunch of answers. Well, I was baptized. Well, I went to church. I'm a good person. I haven't hurt anybody. Those are all great things. But that's not what Jesus said. <laughs> you may say, I went to a mosque. I went to a synagogue. I went to a cathedral. My mom is Catholic. My dad is a Muslim. My parents are Jewish. That all those are wonderful things. I'm glad for your heritage. But that's not the way Jesus said you get to heaven. Jesus said, you must be born again. That's what Jesus said. Now, if some of you want to dispute that, then you have to tell me that you've been to heaven and come back and you're going to give us the directions. But unfortunately, or really fortunately, none of you have been to heaven, so you can't give any directions. So the best person to give directions to his own home is the one who's been there, come to earth, and has gone back. I think Jesus knows how to get to his own home. So before you tell me on how to get there, you've never been there. So let's take the directions from the man who's been there. And he said, no man can see the kingdom of heaven unless they're born again. All right, then how does that happen? It's as simple as what? A, B, C. It's A, admitting that we're sinners. It's admitting that all of us, starting with the man who's speaking to you, we're all broken on the inside. It's a sin condition. I can't fix it with a program, a prescription. I can't fix it with a promise. You can't fix it with a pastor, a priest. You can't fix it on your own. We need help. We're not mistakers in need of correction. We're sinners in need of a savior. We don't need a second chance. We need a second birth. How does that happen? That's the B word, believe. Believe that God sent his son 2,000 years ago to die on a cross in my place. He would begin to die the death I was supposed to die, live the life I couldn't even live and give me a reward, heaven and forgiveness I don't even deserve. And C, confess him as Lord. That word means you're the boss now. You don't just get Sundays, you get every day. That's the difference between a religion and a relationship. When you are religious, that means every time you show up in a building, you get a little solemn and you get a little holy. But you think you can do the rest of the, everything you want on Monday through Saturday. That's not the way it works. That's what religion does. Relationship says you're in charge of every day. You get Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. Folks, think of it for just a moment. If you could get yourself to heaven, then why would Jesus have had to come 2,000 years ago? If you were the one, wouldn't that, be, wouldn't that be child abuse from God the Father? Go down and die on the cross. We're going to throw you in a tomb. We're going to whip you. You're going to bleed. You're going to go through all this pain. But then I'm going to tell humanity, do your best and you'll get to heaven. Impossible. It doesn't even make sense. The only way we can get to heaven is through a Jesus that's alive that can get us there. And if you're here today and say, Tim, I thought my religion can get me there. Or, Tim, I thought my good works can get me there. Or, Tim, I've never made that decision before. But today, when you pray that born again prayer, I want to be part of it. I want to be put in that prayer. Annex, in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Main floor here on the balcony and main floor, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you want to be part of this prayer. Outside on 51st, I may not be able to see you, but God sees you. And those that are watching online, if you're going to make that decision, I want you to type in the word decided because that's what you're doing. I'm decided to make this decision. For just a moment, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you say, Tim, when you pray this prayer, I want to be included in it. Today, I check the rock. He's alive. And I want that Jesus inside of my life. 
I don't want a label of religion. I want a living Jesus in my heart and life. Today, balcony, main floor, around the world and around the United States, in the annex, I'm going to ask you, if you say, Tim, when you pray that born again prayer, I want to start a journey today with God. And some of you are already saying this. So you're going like, I can't do it because I'm not perfect. Exactly. Get this. Perfect people don't go to heaven. Forgiven people go to heaven. And that can happen right now. Today could be the day of salvation for you. Right now. So before I pray this prayer, if you say, Tim, include me in this prayer today. I want God in my life. I want to leave this place knowing the tomb is empty, but Christ is in my heart. Put me in that prayer without any hesitation. Annex, main floor, I want you to do me a favor. If you say, put me in that prayer, hold up your hand as high as you can. Say, put me in that prayer. Keep them up because I want to make sure I see them and count every hand that's up. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven. I'll get to you in the second balcony. Twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one. Keep them up. I want to make sure. Forty, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven. Balcony, hold them up high. Keep them up, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. Keep them up, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63. Keep them up, I wanna make sure, yes, yes, gotcha, 64. Can we thank God for all those that raised their hands in here? Annex, keep your hands up in the annex. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna make sure you are recognized in that annex and online, you go ahead and begin to type in the word. Can we all pray this together? Come on, let's say this. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe that on the cross you took my sin, my shame, and my guilt, and you died for it. You faced hell for me so I wouldn't have to go. You rose from the dead to give me a place in heaven a purpose on earth and a relationship with your father today Lord Jesus I turn from my sin to be born again come on say this loud God is my father Jesus is my savior the Holy Spirit is my helper and heaven is my home and let's say this and I check the rock and he's not there in Jesus' name, and everybody said amen.